Breathe by Hicks and Gracie. Um, yeah, so this was a book I was looking forward to for years. I was looking forward to this book coming out even before it had been announced that he was writing it. There was Hicks and Gracie and Bosch Rutten. Bosch Rutten is the only other guy that hasn't announced he's writing an autobiography that in the world of martial arts I really want to read their autobiography. Hickson, for those of you who might not know, uh, is currently, I think he's a ninth, yeah, eighth or ninth, ninth man, I think he is, red belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which is above black. Um, you can make a very strong argument that he is the greatest Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy that ever lived. Uh, some more modern times would say, well, Hoka Gracie is, because Hoka's won some world championships. Prime v Prime, I don't know of anybody in pure submission grappling that beats. Hickson. He always found a way to do stuff. He was not the untouchable Superman that we tend to have in, in our minds. When you watch any of the highlight videos of his on, on YouTube, and you especially the uh, Zulu fights, you got to remember that those are edited down. They're, they're not the full thing. He would, and I think that the, the full fight actually is better because we can see that he was under stress, he was under pressure. I mean, the first Zulu fight, he was 18, by the way. Um, but you can see that it's not just that he's walked through everybody. It's he's, he's been in places where he doesn't want to fight. He mentions in the book that in that first Zulu fight, between rounds, he said, oh, I'm not going back out. I, don't, I, I can't win. I can't do it. I can't do it. I don't want to win. He goes back out, and he wins. So if you can take the message there of, you know, you never know how close you are before you quit, so don't quit. Yeah, The next door you knock on might be the one that opens up and gives you everything you want in life. I would have preferred it if he would have gone into a little bit more detail with stuff. Um, he doesn't mention the Dr. Ron Trip Sambo match at all. Uh, the one and only out of, he tells us, 400 victories. Um, of those 400 victories, we know we've got the 11 mixed martial arts victories that have been recorded. We have certain jiu-jitsu matches against some of these guys in the shadows that are recorded. The way he beats, I, th I think it was Jean-Jacques Machado, might have been Hegan. The way he beats his cousins, the Machados, would imply and infer that nobody else was going to give him any difficulty in a, in a, in a straight Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu match. He does mention how in the, oh, was it the Takada fight or the, or the Funaki fight? No, the, the second Takada fight, he gets his retina detached. So he's sort of lying on the floor for a little bit going, uh, as soon as I can see again, you're in trouble. Little interesting things like that of in-fight stories. The stories of growing up as, as, as this member of a fighting family where, you know, halfway through your match, somebody from another dojo might come in and just challenge you and you might be forced to fight the guy. Quite interesting. I always had in my mind this, this view of Hickson as being this kind of almost pure brilliant white light that was very sort of we meditate we're in touch with nature which is all about the art if you know all about your art i can take the violence out of beating you then you read this and it's like throughout my youth i drugged i did this i took a bag of mushrooms out on a surfboard see what would happen and you just think holy fuck okay so even though we might have an image up here of somebody the true story of them might be slightly that they are human they are they are capable of doing things that you might not think you would associate with them. It's heartbreaking when he talks about how his son died. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that. It's not... It's not massive text. And it's not a massively thick book. To me, this would, would have worked really well as Volume 1. Again, love Hicks and Gracie. He's always going to be on my Mount Rushmore of martial arts heroes. But I think this could have been deeper, there could have been more detail. I get that he was trying to go for, I'm going to give you the, the, the bare details of the story so you take the message and move on, which is a very good way of, of teaching martial arts. If you show everyone every, someone everything, they'll go away having learned nothing. I get that, but with it being his autobiography, I would like if you go into a little bit more detail with this, a little bit more detail with that. Um, you can still write the, the thorough details in an entertaining, interesting way, but Again, if you're into your Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, if you're into your grappling, if you're into your MMA, if you're into your history of martial arts, absolutely worth reading. If you have no idea who the hell Hickson Gracie is and you keep pronouncing it Rickson, 
it's a very good book as, a, as, as an introduction to this guy that would hopefully be a jumping off point to get you into MMA and to get you into martial arts. I do suggest you get it. I do recommend it. This is one of the few books I will ever review on this channel that I bought first copy full price. Um, I didn't get it second hand. I got it full price as soon as I, I pre-ordered it. So as soon as it was released, it was on its way to me. That should tell you how much I like the guy. From a purely self-defense point of view, you don't need it because it's not a self-defense uh, tactical book. It's not a technique book. It's not an educational book for those purposes. It's not a textbook. It's not a biography of the guy. I, I would highly recommend you get a copy of this book.